As soon as RK Tandon picked up the call, a girl started doing obscene acts in front of him. He quickly cut the phone, but even those few seconds were enough for the scammer. He gets a call an hour later. The caller claims to be from the police. The caller says that a woman has complained that she has intimate pictures with Tandon. The caller says that if Tandon wants to settle the matter, then he will have to give them money. Then after a while, another person tells Tandon on social media platform that they have a video of his conversation with the girl. He wants to prevent this video from being circulated, then he will have to give them 50,000 rupees. In fact, the moment Tandon answered the call, it was recorded. They have now started blackmailing him. Tandon filed a complaint with the Cybercrime Bureau and the calls stopped coming. This whole episode is categorized as sextortion. That is, there will be threats of publishing obscene pictures and demanding money for not doing it. Often in such cases, people fear that their honor may be hurt and they agree to give money in private. But once you pay, then you can get stuck in their chain of blackmailing. Such cases have been reported more in states like Delhi, Maharashtra, Gujarat and Rajasthan. In another case, Sonali ordered a smartphone online. She paid through plastic money. Within 4 hours, she got an automated call. The person told her that he was calling from a bank. Through the interactive voice response system, she was asked if she had just made transaction with debit or credit card. She was asked to press 1 for yes and 2 for no. The moment Sonali pressed 1, phone got disconnected. Sonali started thinking what to do. Then she finds that two consecutive transactions were made from a bank account. Sonali got the card blocked by calling the bank's customer care number. But by then, her account has been hacked. The hacker had made a transaction by taking access to OTP sent on her phone. In such calls that are related to financial transactions, it is necessary to double check before sharing any information. Arvind had not answered any calls. He himself called and he got trapped. He had received an SMS that if the electricity bill was not paid, the power connection of his house would be cut. When he called on to get more information, he was told that he had old dues to pay. He should pay his dues soon or else there will be a power failure. Arvind immediately clicked on the link and his bank account was hacked. An amount of 24,000 rupees was automatically withdrawn from his bank account. Obscene videos, card blocks, electricity will be cut. All these cases may look different, but in all these cases, money was extorted. Mumbai police had made a list of cities from where fraud calls on cybercrime are made. Sextortion calls are made from Mewat in Haryana. Electricity bill scam calls are made from Jharkhand. Investment related fraud calls are made from Kerala. Insurance fraud calls are made from Noida in Delhi NCR. Fraud calls with fake loan apps are being made mostly from Asansol in West Bengal and Motihari in Bihar. Don't be afraid of calls related to cybercrime. Just report them. You can complain on the Government of India's two national helpline number 155260 or 1930. After you file the complaint, the case is transferred to the state police. The police work in coordination with the banks and payment wallet companies. If the money is credited to the account of the fraudster, then the bank withholds the transaction. File a complaint of blackmailing through sextortion at the police station in your area. Give phone numbers, videos and conversation recordings to the police. Know that if someone makes a video of you, then you are not the criminal. The person who has made the video is a criminal. Under the country's law, Anyone who publishes obscene content can be punished from 2 to 5 years.